The seawall was built in the 50s in response to the 1953 flood. I mean, we've just recently had the uh, 60th anniversary of, the, of that event and key components of the seawall have started to fail, which is not unexpected given the age of the, the structure now. The copings in particular, which take the main force of the water of the sea during storm events, have gradually moved seaward over time, caused by something called thermal expansion. There's potential for them to, to fall off if we don't do something with them. They can't just simply be pushed back into place. And so the only way to deal with them is to actually remove them and replace them with new blocks. Conventional scheme, we might break out concrete using large breakers on excavators. That's not going to work on this scheme because we don't want the concrete material to drop onto the foreshore and damage the chalk or, or damage anything else. So we've actually been lifting them out whole. It is a lot of weight to move about. That's why we've got the heavy machinery to do the job. Once the blocks are removed, we put them in a storage area around the corner. And then the machine comes down, breaks them up smaller loaded onto a lorry and taken away to a recycling yard. The blocks that we're putting in on the seawall face and on the, on the coping are pre-cast. They're made in a factory, you're, you're working in factory conditions and they're not affected by weather and they, the moulds that they're made in are more precise than you can achieve when it's on site. The coping stones are manufactured by a local company actually up in Sittingbourne. Each individual unit we're putting in comes up just short of three metric tonnes. On a standard car you're probably talking two minis. Each. The blocks that we're putting in, which are the, the, the ones on the on the, the top edge of the seawall, are held in place with metal dowels. We drill into the concrete behind, insert a 32mm dowel bar to hold them in place so when we pour the concrete it, they actually stay there solid and don't ever move again. This is part of the Viking Coastal Trail, so it's part of the National Cycle Network. So people enjoy it on bikes, uh, people enjoy walking. It's just a great amenity space for the local people and for visitors. So we're trying as much as possible not to close promenades and keep access ways open and you know, accommodate where we can. Logistically a bit difficult, yeah, because uh, obviously we've got to keep access for public. We have to stop to let them pass, or we stop them until we've done what we have to do, then let them through. Working in a coastal environment is more challenging than you know, somewhere more landward. We obviously have to work around the tides. We also have issues to, to manage around not impacting on the designated sites here. So immediately adjacent to where we're working, the foreshore, the, the coastline is designated the chalk reef, chalk cliffs, and uh, certain species of, of birds are protected in this area. Obviously it's, it's an asset that we need to protect and make sure that works like this don't impact on, on it in the long term and up until the end of March we had to stop for two hours during the high tide time for uh, nesting birds, I think they were called turnstones, so that made it a bit interesting as well. The scheme itself is grant funded by the Environment Agency, it's got a value of about £1.3 million, so it's not local money, it's a, a national flood and erosion risk management grant. There's a total length of 659 metres that we're addressing uh, here at Westgate and two other areas to the west of us. The contractor that's delivering this scheme is Jay Brahini and they have worked with uh, the council before. In fact, they delivered the Margate Flood and Coast Protection Scheme two years ago. The Margate scheme was, was finished on time and on budget and uh, you know, we're very pleased with the result and this scheme is also going similarly well. Time-wise, we're pretty much on programme, maybe slightly early. So we should be out of here just before the children finish for school for the summer holidays. It's always extremely satisfying to be able to deliver schemes like this where we can refurbish seawalls to make sure that they work properly, that they can perform in those storm conditions and provide the amenity value for everyone to enjoy. And uh, yeah, I live locally and we'll be, we'll be one of the people that enjoy cycling along it.